Hello, everyone. I'm Dimitro, and I'm one of the tech leads of PyTorch, focusing on some core and production aspects. And today I'm going to talk about quantization support, which we've been working on. So if you look in the recent years, there are several production trends which shape model design. On the data center side, the share of neural networks inference is really keeps growing, and it often requires using special hardware tricks to keep the cost down. On the other side, number of mobile and embedded deployments is growing too, and those platforms usually have very constrained compute resources. All of that requires model design that really takes hardware into account. With PyTorch, our goal is to give you best tools for building your models, and that also includes tailoring your models to hardware. Quantization is one of such popular approaches of doing so. It's based on a simple idea. Can neural networks run in lower precision? For example, often one can scale down the weights and activations of the model from traditional uh, flow 32 to 8-bit integers, and it works quite fine. Besides reducing the size of the weights and thus memory fo footprint by a factor of four, many modern hardware platforms also provide special compute instructions in integer arithmetic, which have like two to four times higher compute throughput than floats. However, because int8 has only 256 values, uh, one has to do special tricks to remap floating points to few available integers and uh, preserve precision of the model. Simplest approach is applying a fine transformation where parameters such as scale and zero point are shared for the entire tensor and then thus can be handled only once in the computation. In general, quantization with minimal accuracy drop is an area of active research in the past few years, and some of the approaches proven to work quite well. With 1.3 release, we introduce experimental first-class support for model quantization in PyTorch. It comes at several levels. First, it's a set of uh, turnkey workflows for quantization, which allows you to take a model and convert it to lower precision with minimal accuracy drop. Workflows themselves are built on a set of components and torch.nn layers, which can be used independently or tweaked to figure out the right way to preserve precision. And at its lowest level, PyTorch provides some basic support for operations on quantized Intel tensors, on, today on x86 uh, CPUs and mobile ARM CPUs. Let's take a closer look at quantization workflows. The simplest one to try is dynamic quantization, which converts to Intel only the weights of the model while keeping the activations in, float, uh, in floating point. It's usually most effective for small, uh, for small batch inference use cases, which are usually memory bound, such as MLPs or LSTMs in inference. For those models, it's usually pretty much a free performance win with no accuracy drop. Post-training quantization is a technique which converts both weights and activations on already trained model to lower precision. Uh, and it also usually requires access to a representative data set to estimate the ranges of activations which would be flowing through the network. It often gives you a good accuracy, especially for like common CNNs, while giving you a good performance throughput. If you really want to preserve the best accuracy, there are techniques called quantization-aware training, which effectively simulates the uh, precision drop as a part of model training, or like model fine tuning, allowing the model to learn around potential inaccuracies and reduce the accuracy drop. It's important to highlight that those workflows are only just suggested examples, and you can always build your own from the low-level components which PyTorch provides. So let's take a closer look at first of those two workflows. Dynamic quantization is really like one-line API, which you can apply to any PyTorch model or any PyTorch submodules with linear or RNN layers inside after it's been trained. Under the hood, we would swap out the implementations of modules with their quantized versions, which would convert the weights down to, uh, down to int8. And the new model can be used directly for inference in Python, or it can be saved as a Torch script, as Michael uh, described, and used for inference in C++ on an embedded device. For post-training quantization, usually there are two steps involved. First, you, calibrate, you need to calibrate the quantization settings using representative data set, and then convert both weights and activations to lower precision. In case of CNNs, you might need to tweak your model architecture a little bit to make it more quantization friendly. One common example is folding batch norm computation directly into convolution, uh, conversion weights for inference, uh, because it's important both for precision uh, and better quantization accuracy. One can uh, directly convert the model, uh, tweak the model code directly in Python code, or you can use one of the manipulation APIs to replace the modules in existing model. Then you need to mark which part of the model you want to quantize and which technique you want to use for that. 
We provide some default settings which work quite well for typical CNNs and RNNs, but you can always provide your own implementation if you want to. Quantization parameters, such as uh, scale and zero point, are estimated by running models on a few representative data batches. The estimation mechanism itself, is actually which we call observers, is actually implemented using standard PyTorch features, such as submodules and forward hooks. So it basically means that you can use your arbitrary evaluation loop, uh, which your model training script might, might already have, just like with regular PyTorch code. After calibration, each supported module will get, be get swapped out with quantized version that would convert weights to intate and will make use of estimated quantization parameters to, convert, to carry out computations in intate and convert, uh, kind of upscale the uh, activations at runtime. So if you just print those modules, you would basically just see that our convolution got turned into quantized version of it. Again, resulting model can be used for inference directly with Python or uh, saved as a torch script for serving outside of it. You might have noticed that some of the operations, like folding the batch norms, are a little bit nasty to handle manually. If your model can be converted to TouchScript first, we will soon be able to analyze the structure of model forward and uh, carry out necessary tweaks automatically. This functionality is coming in the next release, which is 1.4, but the early version of that should be available in nightly soon. So to summarize, uh, quantization sub-package is built to work well with the rest of PyTorch. I want to highlight that it's not a separate runtime. It's really first-class PyTorch functionality. Uh, so it uses the same serialization format both in Python and TorchScript, and you can mix quantized and non-quantized parts of your model, figuring out the best trade-off. Implementations of quantized workflows uh, themselves are easy to tweak and extend. Majority of logic is actually implemented in Python, so you can use your regular convenient debugging tools to understand what's going on and extend it. And also APIs are extens have a lot of extension points to plug in your new layer support or uh, with a way to compute quantization parameters or even new quantization schemes you might want to try in your research. And of course, you can always use low-level primitives to construct your quantized model from scratch without using any of the high-level APIs. So how, do, how well does it work in practice? We tried the above workflows on several representative models. With default settings, post-training quantization usually can convert a uh, majority of CNNs to intate with pretty low uh, accuracy drop, something under half a percent. And it runs about 2x faster on modern server-side CPUs. As another example for MobileNet v2, in order to preserve good accuracy, we actually had to do a few rounds of fine-tuning with quantization of our training, again with default settings. Resulting intate models run, uh, runs about four, four times faster on ARM CPUs, and you can actually try it with an uh, early version of PyTorch Mobile that David is going to be talking about soon. In our experience with dynamic quantization, it's usually the easiest one to, uh, to kind of try out and deploy. And it can easily give you something like 30% 30, uh, 30 to 2x or even 4x win on real models with virtually no accuracy drop. For example, we used it on fair 6 style translation model, and encoder portion pretty much goes 4x faster with about 50% drop on the entire model. With 1.3 release, we provide support for common operations on quantized tensors, and enough coverage on Torch and N layers to implement common CNNs and RNNs. In terms of backends, uh, there are implementations on x86 CPUs powered by FBGEM, and a better version of ARM CPU uh, kernels powered by QNN Pack, great library written by Marat, who is here in the audience. And in future releases, we'll uh, expand coverage of both operations and uh, layers, and as well as extending the backend support, uh, most importantly, adding CUDA, and as well as simplifying the workflow for quantizing models which are already in TorchScript. To sum up, quantization package is available in 1.3. It's marked as experimental, which basically means that all, all the stuff I talked about should work with relatively stable APIs. Maybe there will be mi really minor tweaks solidifying before the next release. Please try it out and let us know what you think. Uh, there are multiple ways to provide us feedback. You can create GitHub issues. You can also go to forums. If you use hashtag uh, quantization, or like, uh, we'll definitely take a look at this. We also will be publishing a number of tutorials of how to quantize most common models in Torch Vision and some of the NLP models. And this list will expand over time, as well as some of the models being uploaded to Torch Hub. And in the next release, 1.4, which is coming by NIPS, uh, we plan to add sim a simpler workflow for converting models in TorchScript and continue expanding operator coverage. Thank you.